Last mile delivery is growing business. Add to that all the many other uses for work vans, and it equals high demand. To grow their fleets responsibly, customers are looking for battery electric versions. Amazon has over 10,000 Rivian vans on the road. GM has their Bright Drop van. Ford is updating their e-Transit, the all-electric version of their best-selling commercial van. And Mercedes is shipping their e-Sprinter. I just completed a video on that one. And then there's Ram, who at the 2024 Work Truck Week boldly proclaimed they want to be number one in light commercial vehicles in North America. To achieve that, they're going to organize under their parent company Stellantis as Pro One, an organization focused on the needs of commercial vehicle fleets. Last fall, Stellantis showed off their latest electric vans in Europe that they plan to sell under the Peugeot, Citroën, Fiat, Opel, and Vauxhall brands. In North America, we get Ram Professional and the 2024 Ram Promaster EV, an updated battery electric commercial vehicle. Let's go for a ride. The Ram Promaster has been around for a few years in North America. Manufactured in Mexico, a refreshed version is available as an all-electric. There are two basic configurations. A delivery version is shipping now, and a cargo version will come next year. The body configuration is described as super high roof, and it offers a package delivery option from the factory. Normally, you'd have to work with a separate upfitter for this. It includes a sliding curbside door to safely deliver packages, a low step-in, and a grab handle, a jump seat if you're lucky enough to have an assistant, factory LED lighting in the package area, and aluminum shelves that can be folded up to fit bigger boxes. Separating the package area from the driver is a sliding bulkhead door. For larger cargo, roll up the lightweight aluminum door, and you can see why they call it super high. This version of the Promaster EV can accommodate far taller packages than the high roof versions from Ford and Mercedes-Benz. The cargo van will come later. It has a traditional sliding side door with lots of space for whatever you need to do, a high roof, not a super high, and two traditional seats, nice interior features, with a large touchscreen display. So let's talk about the EV specs. Ram Promaster is a front wheel drive van, while Ford and Mercedes Benz are rear wheel drive. Battery electric vehicles tend to have a more even weight distribution since the battery is towards the middle of the vehicle, so there's not a significant traction advantage. Ram Promaster EV claims to have the most power, but just by a little. All three electric vans offer as good or better torque compared to the combustion engines offered in the same models. The all-new Mercedes eSprinter has the largest battery of the three, with the new Ram Promaster EV just a little bit smaller. The Ford e-Transit has been doing fine with a much smaller battery, but not to be outdone, they're updating their EV for 2024 to include a larger battery. Because these are all Class 2B commercial vans, they do not need to submit EPA range estimates. So comparing the three is an apples and oranges comparison. Ford's numbers are estimates for their high roof version, and I base that on the press release for the new model. Mercedes-Benz quotes WLTP test results, and Rams talks about city driving range, since that's a common use case, lots of stop and go package delivery. The fact is, they all come to shows like this to listen to customers about their needs and to use real-world data to understand just how much range is needed. Most vans do not require hundreds of miles of range, but you do want to have some margin of safety to account for cold weather and other factors. The bigger battery adds costs, and it also adds weight, which eats into the maximum payload. Mercedes has the biggest battery, so less payload, it also uses an LFP chemistry. Ford has the smallest battery and uses NMC chemistry, which is more expensive, but it's energy dense, so a little less weight. Ram is kind of the Goldilocks, kind of in the middle. Packages are often more bulky than heavy, so all three offer the ability to move a lot of merchandise. 
Fleet managers prefer AC level two charging overnight if possible. Since it's the least expensive electricity, the least expensive charging equipment, and the vehicles are just sitting there for hours. Ram and Mercedes-Benz offer fairly traditional AC charging capability, but the 2024 e-Transit speeds it up with AC level two charging using dual onboard chargers, meaning it can recharge in fewer hours with the right equipment. Looking at the time savings, you can see that it could prove useful depending on how far your vehicles get driven and how long they sit overnight. If DC fast charging is needed, all three offer improvements in that area as well. Ram and Mercedes Benz both take the approach of offering different levels of DC charging if the customer wants it. I'll mention that Stellantis in Europe offers a hydrogen fuel cell version of one of their smaller vans, and they plan to roll that out into their larger vans this year and said that in 2025, it could come to the U.S. just before a heavy-duty pickup truck is planned to be offered. But I'm skeptical of hydrogen fuel cell trucks of this size. Producing hydrogen without releasing greenhouse gases in its production, so-called blue hydrogen or green hydrogen, it's proving difficult and far more expensive than originally thought. Plus, fuel cells, they're just not as efficient as battery electric vehicles in how they use energy. Driving the ProMaster EV is smooth and quiet. The rear aluminum shelves were empty, so they make noises going over bumps. But overall, it's much better on the ears than a gas or a diesel engine. Acceleration is good. It starts off very good, but as you get faster, you hear the wind rushing over the super high roof, and you realize that you're pushing a large frontal area vehicle through the air. There are lots of cars with inside digital rearview mirrors. For them, it, it feels like kind of a gimmick, but in a large van with a bulkhead blocking your rearward vision, it's very reassuring, and it just feels natural to have that rear view where you would expect it to be. Ram ProMaster has lots of safety and driving convenience features to mention. Forward collision warning with pedestrian protection. That, that sounds like a good idea. Intelligent speed assist lets drivers know when they're going over the posted speed limit. You can have the radio mute when in reverse and generate a white noise to let pedestrians know that there's an electric van quietly backing up. All good stuff. Fleet managers often prefer to have their trucks drive more like a combustion engine vehicle. They assume that their drivers are coming to work in a gas vehicle. Odds are that's true. So having them jump into an electric van that drives differently makes them a little worried. And so there's only one regen mode and it's very light. The van also creeps forward like you would expect with a combustion engine vehicle when you take your foot off the brake. I was told that they're working on other drive modes using software, but those won't come out till next year. A year ago, Ram said they would be delivering ProMaster EVs to Amazon by now. I suspect that Amazon's one of the first customers for this delivery version. MSRP with the full package delivery is about $87,000, but they qualify for federal clean commercial vehicle credits plus lower operating costs and in some states, incentives on top of that. The cargo version will come next year. Gas-powered ProMasters can also be built as a window van or cutaway, and if there's enough demand, you could see those offered as an EV as well. To meet Ram's professional goal of being number one in North America, they say they've doubled production at their plant. In this transition to electrification, Ram Professional sees an opportunity to finally knock Ford Pro off its throne. It'll be interesting to see how they do. Thanks for watching.